Hey YouTube, how's it going? This is John, aka Games81. Thank you for checking out another video of mine. A lot of people ask me, they're like, John, what is your rarest system in your collection? And it's hard for me to pick one, but if I really to think about it, sit back and think about it and pinpoint just one, I'd probably have to say it's a Bally Home Library computer. Uh, it came out in 1977. I'll explain to you why it's so rare here in a minute. What I'm going to show you is the, the case, the box that I have with it. I'm going to show you the system and show you some gameplay footage. Uh, Bally itself is actually a really interesting company. It's got a really fascinating company because it's, it broadens a lot of different business, business models. Now, a lot of you guys who are into games might recognize Bally because they teamed up with Bally Midway, which obviously they created Pac-Man, a whole bunch of other classic Bally Midway games. They got really into the pinball machines. Eventually, even Williams took over and helped them with pinball machines. They initially started with the slot machines for casinos. In fact, they started casinos when Atlantic City started legalizing gambling. I believe it was in the with the 1930s something range and they started a Bally's Casino which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with if you guys live in the States. I'm not sure if they have any international. They might. Also they got into the health and fitness clubs so they created Bally Total Fitness. So there's a plethora of different business models that they have. One of the, op the things they want to do in the late 70s was get into the video game market and be mainly because Atari had released recently released Atari 2600 in 1977 and they were thinking about getting to the video game system market. And so this was the very first one, the very first model that they released. Here is a package that I got with this, and I was really lucky to find this. In fact, when I was searching for it, I looked under the Astro K, because that's really what most gamers recognize the system for being, because that's the most common model. Even though the Astro K, actually interesting enough, is a pretty rare system itself. This is what the box looks like. It's really cool. It's very retro. You can see a whole bunch of people playing, saying I'm playing arcade games. They did release a stand-up Bally Astrocade machine, which is pretty fascinating. Basically, it was just a cabinet, and they hooked up a Bally Astrocade to it. That's really rare. Uh, I haven't seen one uh, available, to be honest with you. On the side here, it shows you a uh, kid playing, uh, using it kind of as a computer. And that's kind of how they market it. They market this machine as more of a computer, like a learning tool, than they actually did for a gaming console. Here's what the games look like. They're almost like cartridges, but they're not, they're not cassette tapes. They look like a lot, though. Uh, and then here's the interesting aside here. It, this is a picture of the professional computer here, and that's a uh, totally different. Uh, actually, this is the uh, arcade, yeah, Bally Arcade, and this is a totally different model than what actually was in the box. So let's take a closer look at the system. Oh, before I do, I want to show you one thing. This is the box that I got on the outside of it. So this is a shipping box. I'm going to leave the just uh, you know confidential, but I do want to show you something here. This, and this serial match, the serial number does match the actual system, and it's five. 5,395, so I'm not sure what that means as far as uh, the numbers go, but I think it's a pretty low production number. In fact, I know it is, and I'll explain to you why in a minute. So let's check out the system so itself. So here is the Bally Home Library computer, as it states here on, on this really nice um, display here. This system, let me tell you, it's almost in brand new shape. I'm really lucky to have this one. Really interesting history behind this is that this particular version, the Home Library computer, was released in 1977. The reason it was so rare is because you could only get it through mail order. And the production was so pushed back that they really didn't get most of them out until 1978. And by the time they hit the market in 1978, Bally had changed the name to Bally Professional Arcade. And they changed the color to this. Uh, there was a model that was all white. This is actually, you can see it's got a wood grain finish, very retro looking. Um, so most of these home li library computers did not see the light of day, hence it was so rare because it was only available through mail order. Okay. Uh, now in the early 1980s, a third party company was really looking to get into the video game market and they had kind of proposed an idea of calling the system the Astrovision. It was Astro Astrovision Inc. is the name of the company. And a guy, a representative at Montgomery Ward, who was working through Bally to really market these things, paired Bally and Astrovision together, and they pretty much teamed up, and by 1981, it was no longer known as the Bally Professional Arcade, but it was known as the Bally Computer System. I, I believe that was maybe a white label here, it was different. Again, it looked pretty much the same. That was actually packed in with like a basic cartridge, so they kind of upgrade that. And by 1982, it was known as the Astrocade, so they again changed the name for the third time to the Astrocade, really confusing the consumer. Now, Bally's main mistake when they released these systems were they marketed it as a computer more so than the home console. They wanted to differentiate themselves from an Atari 2600 where they pretty much market it as, hey, it has a calculator, you can do basic, you can do your taxes, all that good stuff using this. You saw the outside of the box, that was kind of their marketing thing. Big mistake on Bally. They didn't really market it as necess like necessarily a, a video game system for kids or for adults, so to speak. Uh, by 1983, the video game crash hit and pretty much by 1985, 
Bally and Astrovision pretty much pulled out of the market. And so sadly, these things didn't do very well. Uh, Atari 2600, per, Atari, I should say, really blew them out of the water. Uh, and so many systems were out by 1983, it was ridiculous. Too many in the market, that's one of the main reasons for the video game crash. Uh, let's take a closer look at the system itself. As you can say, see, it's got a really nice display. Here is kind of uh, uh, the keyboard, so to speak. You can use it for a calculator. There's different things. This is kind of your option thing, which I'll show you when I show you some gameplay. These are what the cards look like. They're not necessarily cassettes. They do have like a, there is some, uh, there's, there's like a board in there. But it, it definitely looks and shaped like a cassette for sure. Uh, these actually slide in like so. You can do it one-handed. And then uh, you can eject like that. This is your reset button. And uh, now this comes off, obviously. And let's check out the back. I'm going to be very, very careful with this thing. In fact, let me do this. Let me take off this thing here. Okay. Uh, on the very back, underneath, you can see this is where the control parts go ports going to. Uh, there are four control ports, which is pretty cool. Uh, and this is the on-off switch right here. Now the RF cable and the AC adapter are all built into the system. This thing comes out, there was actually an expansion model. It was called the Two Grass 100, and it was supposed to make it more like a computer. I don't think that I ever saw the light of the day. There might be a few uh, prototypes laying around somewhere. I'm sure some collector has. Uh, now this thing opens up. It's really cool. You got the storage space here. And let me show you one of my favorite things about this system itself are the controllers. Now I have two of them and each controller is actually labeled so you can see here two you can see on this one it says one. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that you can have the one controller in the four spot or two spot it's just so you can keep track which is nice. These controllers will work in any controller port but I really like the design. I think this is probably one of my favorite controller designs that they have for any system. Uh, it looks a lot like a pistol. This is your your button kind of like with the Atari 2600 you had that red button this is, would be it like a uh, action button. This is your controller itself. It's got an eight-way controller, and you can actually spin it like this, almost like a, I don't know, like a trackball, right? It's pretty cool. I really liked how they did that. That was really cool of them. It plays phenomenally well. Problem is with these controllers, since there's a lot of movement and stuff, they are bound to break uh, and easily to break. But these actually work pretty well, and it's pretty accurate. Uh, I really like the design. I'm going to show you how it, it plays with some games here in a moment, but that was pretty awesome. Let me show you. Uh, the, one of the game boxes. This is uh, Grand Prix Demolition Derby 2014. So this is, uh, I guess, future. Coming out in four years from making this video. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you got the art, cover art. You got a picture of this. This is like an insert that kind of goes out, comes out. And on the back, it's pretty. You know, just talks about the limited warranty. Uh, and again, you got Astrovision Inc. and Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and pretty interesting case. Let me show you on. Let me take these controllers out very carefully. And let me show you the bottom of this thing. And as you can see here, that's uh, serial number is 5395, matches the box. Model number is uh, BL1200. Uh, and you've got Bally and uh, it's Illinois with two L's. Interesting. But uh, anyway, uh, let's check out some gameplay footage. And I think it's running on the system Thanks. without any games. There are four programs automatically in the system, so it comes with some games. It comes with Gunfight, Checkmate, Calculator, and Scribbling. If you wanted a basic program, yeah, that's actually a separate cassette you have to get for it. Uh, I'm going to push one and enter max score. I have no idea what, what score to put. Let's say uh, 10. I guess that's what you play to. Okay, so basically the uh, way this game works, it's multiplayer and you need two controllers to play it. But the cool thing about the controllers, as I explained before, you can roll the top knob and move the gun like this. Uh, the pistol, if you fire it, goes like that, right? And actually, you can actually move up and down, left, right, just like it. And it's got all eight directions, which is really cool. So you can move diagonal. Uh, no, anything about get this game, really interesting about these games, where the, the system itself was programmed with technically four colors. You could display four colors at one time. However, the way they got around that is they actually, they, could, they actually doubled that to eight. So basically what they did is half the screen, they could do four colors, and the other half, they could do four different colors, the way they could program it. So. Technically, you could see all eight colors on one screen. You can't see all eight colors together uh, all throughout the screen, if that makes sense. So, kind of interesting. Um, this is a pretty fun game. You can see my bolts on the very top. Let's turn it off, and I'll show you another game. Okay, we loaded in Star Battle. Uh, and as you can see, the other four programs are still there, so I can still, still choose this. But now, as option number one, I have Star Battle. This is probably one of my favorite games for the system. I'll explain to you why. Let's push one. 
and we're gonna play one player. Max score, let's do 10 again. This game is like a Star Wars arcade clone. So I'm, oh, he destroyed me. So I'm basically an X-Wing, and you can see that I'm, I'm going against a TIE Fighter and he's killing me, but um, my, my characters, my points are on the very top, and the goal is to play till 10. I mean, pretty fascinating graphics considering it's like late 19th century. Oh, let's see if we can get him. Nice. So, I mean, you guys can get the idea. It's really cool. The 3D effects were really cool. You can see how they really took advantage of the different colors, even though you can only display four colors. They really took advantage of it. So, it's three to two, so we're playing ten. But anyway, you guys can definitely get the idea of the system, and it's actually pretty fun to play uh, for a classic retro system. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye bye.